Okay, so um, we've got the ability to sign up and to log in. I'm going to create an account so that I'm able to sign in. Now, uh, one of the things as, as we're doing as we're testing this, um, I want it so that as soon as I open the project, as soon as I load the project, I want to be logged in. I just created an account here, a at a.com with password a, and then okay, it gets me to home. Well, if I close it and open it completely, remember to mute your devices, please. If I close it and come back to it at this point, um, it says sign in again. So um, I want it to automatically remember that I've signed in so that I don't have to go through the process of signing in again. I did create the account, but I have to log in again. So we'll do this, of course, so that it knows a at a.com has logged in and I'm automatically in the home screen. We'll do that very, very soon. What I want to do here is, okay, if I've logged in, um, I want to have a way to switch accounts or to log out. At the moment, we have the back and forward navigation buttons of the web browser where I can press back and you know kind of back out of it. But again, eventually when this is an app, um, iPhones and iPads don't have a back button. Android devices do have a back button. So we're going to need to uh, be aware of that, that a device may have a back button for navigation or may not. Therefore, we always have to think in terms of the navigation that we're going to allow the user is going to happen in the viewport, in the visible area of the web project. So within the visible area is where we have our back and forward and our home and our logout and such. So just because we've got a back button or a refresh button, we, we don't assume we're going to have that on a real app. So I want to make a way from the home screen to go to a new screen of options or about information so that then I can log out. Uh, then a new person can create an account and log back in. So in the in the PG home, let's go to the HTML file, PG home, and uh, let's add a button here to go to an options screen. I want to set up that in the um, in the header of PG home. I want to add a new button. Now, our HTML code is not that long. In my case, it's about to be 100 lines. And I know I need to be somewhere at the end. As our code gets longer and more complex, I recommend to get used to using Control F to find in your code. So knowing what to search for um, in your code will be very helpful. Again, with only 100 lines, I can scroll down and I'm already where I need to be. But when I've got 200, 500, 700 lines of code, to scroll, 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 scroll to find the spot is a waste of time. Using Control F can be much faster. Control F, you need to know what to find. I remember that we call this thing PG Home. So if I quickly want to jump to the spot where PG Home appears, this might help. without the pound sign. So there's a section. It jumped me down to line 82. I was on line 1. I did control F to find. I found or I searched for something. PG Home. It jumped me to the first instance of that. Sometimes find or search can be very useful and sometimes not. Especially if I have something like href equals pound pg home, well, there would be two instances of pg home, so it might not take me directly to what I'm looking for. I'm going to reiterate using search as we write the JavaScript because it's going to be very useful to jump or to find a certain place in your code. Anyway, our home screen, which is at about line 82, it's very basic at the moment. Uh, what I want to add here first is a button in the header that will have a um, that will be for options. 
Uh, let's do this. First of all, this that simply says home, line 84. Let's change that to the name of the app, CBDB. Then still within the A, uh, still within header, we're going to create a link. We're going to create a button inside of the header. So after H1, we'll create a button called options. href, this will go over to pound pg options, which doesn't exist yet. I want that to animate as a pop transition. So with plain old HTML to jump from section to section or screen to screen, it's href. Um, we want it to animate. Uh, I'm doing a different animation here. Like I said, uh, the flip animation we've used over and over uh, for a certain purpose, navigating the normal different screens of the app. Here, uh, I'm using a transition of pop. It's going to be a pop-up type of a screen uh, for some different option, or for some different concept. Uh, taking a quick look at it, yes? Isn't that a data transition? Data transition, yes, yes. Point data transition. So, testing it um, again, we're gonna have to keep logging in, and eventually it'll remember us. But you're gonna have to keep logging in. Hopefully, pick it a, a very simple email, very simple password. Don't get fancy putting your real email in a real 20 digit password. Super simple at the moment, just to simply log in because we're gonna have to be logging in manually several times. We're putting an options button up in the header. I want to style it a little bit more. I don't want it on the left side. I want it on the right side. I want an icon. Actually, I only want an icon. I don't want the words. So we're going to style up our, our little button here a little bit more. Um, we've used various other data, uh, data icon and data no text and all of that. But sometimes we need to use sort of like the raw, the raw classes. Ultimately, everything that data transition or data role and such, ultimately what those things are, are shortcuts for various CSS styling that are behind the scenes. Sometimes we have to access sort of like the raw version of the code, the raw classes. I'm going to say ui.btn space. So make this link behave like a button. UI-BTN right. Align the button to the right. Yes? How is the options button not coming up on its own line, but it seems to be in line with the H1 when it's displaying? Um, does it, yours looks the same as mine here, that it's all in one line? Yeah, so I was, I was thinking it should kind of come up because H1 is a lock element. What happens is uh, that even if things are block elements, block level elements, you know, this one wants to take up its own space and push down a non block element. True, that's normal HTML. But because we've got these elements within other elements with data roles, they're sort of overriding the original styling. So normally, yeah, that button would be below H1, but because jQuery Mobile sees there's a link and it's inside of a header, we should put it all on one line. So uh, block becomes inline. If we wanted to force it down to the next line, we'd have to do other things. Uh, but this is overriding the default behavior of having uh, two different lines, put it on one line. So this is going to behave like a button. It's going to be uh, to the right. Uh, then we're going to have ui-btn-icon-right. The button itself is going to be moved to the right, but the icon inside of the button will also be moved to the right. Because we've got the button, and that could have a button on the left, the right, the top, the bottom. 
um, you, uh, space UI corner dash all. And there's spaces in between each of these UI. I believe it stands for user interface. So here's a class activating it as a button space. Another one aligning it to the right space, aligning the, the icon to the right, putting rounded corners on all four corners. Space UI dash icon gear. So previously we had data dash icon equals gear. But that was if we were using sort of like the more basic version of the styling. Sometimes when we need to get a little advanced, we have to use the raw code, so to speak. This is the raw code. UI dash icon dash gear. So I wanted a different icon. Obviously, I just changed that from gear to user or whatever other um, valid icon name there is. I want a little gear. The gear is often a representation of options in an app. Space. Yes? Is this an exception for, because usually when you put this many attributes, you use commas. So is this really, is this a unique experience? Is this a unique scenario for classes? Or just a unique scenario for UI? Now, now commas for several other values depends. Uh, it depends if you're doing it in, in, in CSS or or other instances, JavaScript. This is the correct way to do it when you're attaching more than one class to one element. So if I wanted to attach, this is sort of like writing class equals UI button, class equals UI button right, class equals UI button icon right. They can all be chained together by simply putting a space between them. In this case, only matters because it's CSS. Lastly here, UI uh, dash uh, BTN dash icon dash no text. This is a long one. Uh, so then ultimately here we're saying uh, we're setting up an icon, uh, we're setting up a button, it's got an icon, but don't display the text. Now that's similar to what we had before in terms of data dash uh, <coughs> icon text. POS equals false, something like that. So all of this is like the, the longhand version of writing uh, data role equals button. We have to do this because this is a special case. We've got a button in the header that we want to change the default behavior. Even though I wrote it second, I want it to the right, and I want to put an icon in all of that. So we can write the note. <clears throat> long form way to define a button via classes. long line so let me go back over here if you think you've got it go ahead and save it and run it all it is is just restyling the button from the very basic one from a moment ago now it's gonna have an icon it's gonna be moved to the right it's only gonna have the icon not the text if I wanted to do something beyond what the basic would give me. In this case, I have to use the classes, the CSS classes built into jQuery Mobile. These UI dash whatevers, they come from jQuery Mobile. Checking my result in the browser, again, logging in. All of that was to create a little icon on the top right corner of the header. Because the default is going to be on the left side. Um, no uh, icon. Um, so the default isn't what I wanted. I wanted to 
change it up a little bit, so I had to I had to do that. Now this is the part where hopefully, yeah, if you're following along with what I'm doing, it might work. Hopefully, what you do is like, well, what happens if you know if I don't put corner all? The teacher seemed to have said that that makes it rounded corners. Well, if you don't put rounded, if you don't put corner all, you get a little square shape. And all of these, of course, are coming from jQueryMobile.com. I can go look up how do I change icons or buttons and all of that. And so in that case, it was simply removing corner all. Without corner all, you know, sometimes these are not named very obviously. Corner all, I don't think it makes any sense what is it doing, but reading the documentation or someone explaining to you, that makes all the corners rounded. So without it, the default is no rounded corners, you get a little square button. You might want that, it might be a good design. Okay, so this button ultimately links to somewhere that doesn't exist. An options screen. We're going to make an options screen. We can copy and paste, but just for the practice, since it won't be a very complex screen, we're going to create a brand new section, PG options, so after our home screen here. Options, screen, start, options, screen, end. This is a section. It's a brand new screen. Data roll page. Data dialog true. I want it to behave like a dialog box. We've seen a way to do it via via um, JavaScript to make a screen appear as a pop-up uh, when we had those error messages or the successful login. Sometimes we need to make a pop-up happen through HTML. So the syntax here is data dialog true. We had previously divs that had data role pop-ups. Well, those needed to be opened via JavaScript, this pop-up, this dialog box will open via HTML. It needs an ID, PG options. That simple HTML button will open this screen, so it needs the ID, no pound sign. Remember the pound sign is only in the href. Not in the ID, because you can sort of think about it as ID equals means pound sign. Make a note here as well, just for the distinction. An HTML-based pop-up screen syntax. And you can note on the other spot where we made those error messages that popped up via JavaScript. And the syntax here is that we've got something with a data dialog of true. This screen will have a header that tells people you're in the options screen. A main area with a couple of uh, uh, buttons and such. One of them will be like log out. So this needs a header and an article. So that the header behaves like a header. What does that need? Almost. Data header. Data header. So that the header behaves like a header, data header. So that the article behaves like the main content, that one's a little trickier. What does that one need? A role name. Role name, yes. And UI. 
UI, or class, equals UI main. That's the one that's always the tricky one. Everything else is pretty obvious with data role this, data role that. Article is the only one that's kind of weird. You have to memorize that one. Role main, class, UI. UI, see, I forget it too. It's not UI main, it's UI content. Not on this one because it's going to be a pop-up. It's going to appear always in the center of the screen so we don't have to fix it to the top. At the top here we'll have some sort of text that appears to the user that tells them you're in the options screen. H2 here. Sometimes we'll have um, content that we'll figure out a little bit later, so we'll just put a placeholder right there. I'm just putting a heading 2 here as, as another sort of heading that will appear on screen. We'll figure out what to call that later. Uh, and then we're going to have a paragraph. So this options screen will be more will be refined as we go on go on through the app. The minimal thing that I want to do uh, is to create a button where a person can log out. So if you think about many of the apps that you use, there often isn't a very straightforward button to log out. You often have to go to some other sub screen. Uh, the, app, the app developer wants to keep you in their app, you know, keep you using their app, keep you happy in their app. So there's always a log out, but it might often be somewhere else, like in options. So we'll do the same sort of thing. Well, a tag here um, to behave like a button. href pound pg welcome. We'll do the classic data role button. We don't have to do those classes, UI button, and all of that. We could. But uh, here we'll do data role button, data icon. We don't quite have a button, I would say, that's built into the 50 icons that kind of looks like an exit. It'd be nice if there was like a little door or a little person walking out the door. There isn't that one built in. You'd have to make it yourself. This one is alert, which is, um, I think it's that little triangle with the exclamation point. Any kind of icon we'll use here, I think there's probably arrows, you know, arrow L looks at, like an arrow pointing to the left. This will be fine, we can look up some other ones. Um, and uh, an ID here, so we can access it via JavaScript, btn log out. Okay, so if you step back for a moment, this is a button that's going to log out. It goes back to PG Welcome. Welcome is the very first screen a person sees when they first install your app. They see Welcome. Then they can log in or sign up. This would simply and technically take you from home to Welcome, but it doesn't actually log you out. It doesn't mark anywhere in the system, in memory, or anything like that, that you have actually logged out to clear your user information out so that another user can log in. So having this set as PG welcome is ultimately the idea that I want, but I want to execute this via JavaScript. Right now in HTML, it's way too simple. It's too dumb. It doesn't know, OK, really log the person out. Simply move them from one screen to another without any intelligence. We want, via JavaScript, for it to know, OK, this person is trying to log out. Therefore, remove their email from memory so that another person can log in. That's going to happen on JavaScript. 
So href to nowhere. It's going to behave like a like a button, but it's not actually going to go anywhere. This is often called a dummy link, or a, or a null link, or an empty link. Dummy link goes nowhere, but behaves like a button. So we use JS, a dummy link, so that then we can use JS for it to work correctly. So therefore, it's very important to have this ID so that the JavaScript, in its own world of JavaScript, can see the world of HTML, can latch on to it via an ID. We can latch on to that button in the JavaScript so that when someone presses the button, something happens in JavaScript. We're going to jump over to the HTML, uh, the JavaScript. We're going to jump over to the JavaScript file, create a um, an HTML, uh, create a JavaScript object uh, of that HTML node. So make sure that ID is there. I'm going to copy it just in case I misspell it in JavaScript. I'm going to save HTML. Um, well, let's take a quick look at it in the browser before we get too ahead of ourselves just to see how the screen looks or how it should look. Again, you're going to have to log in every time for the moment. Options screen, pop up, log out button. Using data dialog true automatically creates this pop up fades out the previous screen, creates a pop-up, creates a little drop shadow around it, creates a close button. So when we created the error messages, those were divs that we then uh, created very simply. Um, we created right now a pop-up box that behaves a little bit more completely. So that's a couple of ways to do it. Logout does, shouldn't work yet, because we removed pound pg um, welcome. But this is how it look, should look at the moment. And then we'll write our JavaScript so that when a person clicks logout, stuff actually happens. Jump over to the JavaScript. Near the top of our code is where we're creating all of our objects. Let's create another one. So line 20, remember to change that to a comma, because we're doing one more. Dollar L btn logout equal to dollar the jQuery selector. That whole dollar parentheses is the shortcut for the jQuery selector, which is document .get, get element by ID, basically. Semicolon quotes pound. Now here, don't forget the pound. We needed the pound on href. We need the pound here in JavaScript, but the pound is not there when it is in HTML ID equals. Semicolon at the end there. And here's another thing here, completely just for aesthetics. You don't have to do this, but I like how this looks. Tabbing all of these over, now that's some pretty code. If it worked before, fine. But here now it looks nice. And part of good code, I think, is also nice looking code. The 
etn logout. So now we've got a JavaScript object that represents the HTML element. Now we can wait for a button click and then run a function to do things similar to log in and sign up. We had an object for when we for when we signed up. We had an object for when we logged in. Those buttons. Was, uh, those forms. How did we set up our JavaScript for for it, for the JavaScript to wait for or or listen for a button click? We had an event listener exactly. So at the very end of all of our code, we have the our area of event listeners. Um, you know, it might be nice to do something like this: event listeners. All of our event listeners are down there. All of our variable object definitions are up there. All of our functions are in between. This is just a comment, but as you're looking at hundreds of lines of code, when you have some sort of comment that looks different than other comments in whatever style you want there, that's going to stand out as I'm you know, scrolling, scrolling through my code, scrolling, oh, and I see this, looks, looks like a heading if I separate it and all of that. So this is just part of that about making nice looking code. You can make you can write your code that is completely utilitarian, it completely works. And you might say, well, no one's ever gonna look at my code only myself. It's gonna help you too if you comment your code, if you style your code, when you come back to your project a day later, a week later, a year later to work on it again. When you work with several people, that is so imperative to simply comment code, explain what it does, make little styling to show here's all my variables, here's all my event handlers, here's all my functions. Here's all my code related to this one action. Here's all my code related to that. So comments, I recommend them. Both of these are event handlers. They're waiting for an event. Submits events. Submit events when you press submit on a form. There's no form happening at the moment with login, log out. I mean with log out. There's no, there's no submit button. It is simply to uh, press a button to log out. This one's going to behave a little bit different. A little simpler actually. We start off with the name of the object again. Dollar L B T N logout dot. This time we have a method called simply on jQuery method on, which waits or listens for any event. We have specifically submit. We're waiting for something to be clicked on. That is a submit button. That one's that purpose. This one is on. So on the event of something. And the something would be submit. These are pretty much equivalent. On submit is the same thing as just submit. So we use the short one. We're not submitting anything here. We're simply clicking on something. We have click, right click, double click, click and drag. We have all of these possible events. So on an instance of an event, and the event is click, on click, run a function. Comma. On our code above, we had function, event, and then we name the function and pass the event. We needed to do that method or that syntax up there because we were dealing with a with a form that has a built-in behavior which was the refresh behavior which we didn't want that's why we have the prevent default at the beginning of these functions we have prevent default don't refresh the screen so we had to write this syntax to take care of that that refresh 
because we're not dealing with a form anymore. We don't have to be that verbose. Here we can simply say the name of the function we mean, function log out. That's it. We don't have to have anything, anything besides that. Method on which this is for an event, then runs a function fn log out. Parens not used. Parentheses not used in this syntax. We have on click. We don't need the parentheses. We don't need this whole event thing. All of this is to take care of the default behavior of submit, which is refresh screen. That's our event handler. On the event of a click, we will handle it by running a function called function logout. We need to invent the function function logout. There is no built-in JavaScript called fn logout. So we need to back up up here and start to define that. So the short answer, when we deal with forms, we need to make it the syntax longer. When we deal with plain old buttons, we can do the syntax a lot shorter. And technically, we could do the long syntax as well. We could do function, event, fn, logout, parentheses, event. Not necessary. And you know, writing less code, that is correct code, is better. It's more uh, efficient and less prone to errors. And just to confirm that all of this is working so far, we'll do the usual console log saying something like uh, fn logout is running. Go ahead and save it and run it. Test it. Go to your options screen, click the logout button. It won't log out yet, but it should at least give you console output that says this function is trying to run. We're on the right track, perhaps. Let me check mine, and if yours isn't quite working, we'll pause there to make sure it works. Let's see here. So, I'm going to refresh my code, log in. Go to, uh, you should have your F12 running right away uh, to see your console. Option screen, click log out. Line 128 or so should tell you that that function is running. Let me pause there. Anyone need a little help to get to this point?
All right, everyone, let's go on, and uh, here comes the uh, sign-in sheet. All right, so um, what we've got up to this point is simply uh, a check that uh, the button is responding, that our event handler is working. If in your output it simply says that little message, you're on the right track. If it simply says function, is, function logout is running, that's all we need so far. That's showing that, yes, clicking or tapping that button is giving a reaction. And remember, uh, whatever browser you're in, it's often a good idea to clear the console after it kind of fills up with a lot of feedback, because then you can check it again. Is it doing what it's supposed to? So if you see um, a little trash can or a little cross out circle, you can, uh, you can click that to clear your console sometimes. OK, so um, we're seeing that, yeah, we can click the button. So that the JavaScript, so that it shows the JavaScript is paying attention. Let's further fill in that logout button, that logout function. I mean, so after we confirm that this is running, we need to do a few things. We're going to have that button be clicked and 
the default is as soon as you tell any computer to do something, it does it. In any programming language, and you tell it do this, it does it. So um, a person may be kind of wandering around in your app, and they get to the screen, and they don't quite think, and they click the button log out. Whoops, I didn't mean to log out. Let's set it up so that it confirms with them. Are you sure you want to log out? So it'll first ask them, are you sure you want to log out? If they then further confirm, yes, I want to log out, then log them out. If then they say, oh, actually, I don't want to log out, cancel, it keeps them in the app. So here we need to do a conditional statement. Uh, so comment conditional statement to confirm a logout. Now this is going to be different. We used if else statements before. If something is true, do the following. If something is false, do the following. And an if else statement could work just fine to check yes or no, true or false sort of thing. I want to do a different kind of conditional statement. We have like three or four of them. Uh, this one is called a switch statement. Switch statement checks x number of known possibilities. And executes a result based on one of them or a default if all else fails possibility. So this one is one possible way to make decisions. Um, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing this one to your attention as a possible way to, to make decisions. If else could work, but here's another way that could be useful in a project. The syntax for this, we write switch, parentheses, curly braces, Switch checking if they really want to log out or not. So, uh, this first part switch some sort of condition, some sort of question will be asked here. Whereas previously we had true or false, here now we can sort of set up our own possibilities. At the moment we'll just have a true or false. Uh, later we'll get more complex um, for a different purpose, we'll see that later. But then the way that we deal with these possibilities is we have these cases, in case of this, in case of that. Uh, so we have case A colon, stuff happens here, break. This is pseudocode at the moment just to kind of show you what it's going to be eventually. We have another case, well, case B, they chose the option B. Other stuff is going to happen here, break. We can have as many as we want, and we can have all these different cases. Whatever we ask them over here, and their response is this, do the stuff in here, <coughs> stop, nothing else. We ask them a question, actually it chose B. Okay, it skips this part, goes here, does this stuff, break. Um, you can have any number of um, statements in each of these blocks, and only the, the, only the case that was true, the only the case that was chosen actually executes. It'll skip this. If it's B, it will do this, but skip this. If it was A, you have to break, it ends that block. So all of this is like one complete block. Well, if this is based on known possibilities, there's going to be often, I don't, I didn't think of something. Because try as we might, um, we, we try to write foolproof code 
But there's just so many ingenious fools out there that they always fit and manage to break things. So there's a there's a there's a final if all else fails possibility which is default. We didn't think of some possibility, so we have a default possibility where something else happens. For the moment, I'll just write here some console log break. Let's say something like an unknown choice, an unknown possibility. Because we may have, like, we give them seven choices, and somehow they managed to break things, and they chose something that wasn't part of the seven. So we should have some sort of default that deals with something we didn't think of. So that's a possibility we didn't account for. The default. We're basically going to set up a case for true and a case for false. It's true they want to log out. It's false. They don't want to log out. So there's a case true and a case false. Console log. They do want to log out. If it's false, they don't. So really, if we're asking them a question, do you want to log in or do you want to log out, there should be only two possibilities. There could be some third possibility we didn't figure out. So that's why there's default. True log out, false, don't log out. Well, the way we check that is up here in the condition, up here in the parentheses. We have a built-in JavaScript method that can, um, that can ask a simple, uh, simple question. We'll have a more complex one later on when we actually set ourselves up as an app. Because when we get to the part of the class part two in two weeks where we deal with actual devices, we'll be able to tap into features of the device uh, that, that are a little bit more powerful. So um, for the moment, we'll use this built-in JavaScript method, uh, which is confirm. This is a method right here, confirm. We're confirming, basically, true or false. We're about to ask a person a question with possibilities true or false. Inside of the parentheses of confirm is where we write something to the user. So here's where we say, um, are you sure you want to log out? So this message will, dis will be displayed on screen in a confirm dialog box. There's a built-in JavaScript confirm dialog box. It'll be asked that. It'll have built-in OK and cancel, true or false. Therefore, if a person clicks OK, the result of clicking OK should be a true, so the true case should happen. If they cancel, the result that comes back to the code should be a false then the false case should happen. There shouldn't be anything else besides OK or Cancel. They may somehow press Control Alt Delete or do something, and a third thing happens, so then it goes to default. Let's go ahead and save and run this. Let's test this. Let's see if we get that. Click the Log Out button and see if you get a pop-up, and then your message should be there, which should be in quotes. Check your console, and you should see what happens with a Cancel or an OK. So I'm going to run my code. 
log out. Papa, are you sure you want to log out? There's my message. If I click cancel, I get the case, line 138. They do not want to log out. If I click log out and say OK, I get line 135. They do want to log out. If I click the X on the top left, nothing should happen because I, I ignored that. You know, there's only two possible possibilities here. That's where we're at at the moment. So if we've got it this far, we're getting there to do the logout system. If it doesn't quite work, we're about to take a break. So uh, here's the code so far. It's 7.20-ish. We'll take a break until 7.30. Uh, if it works, take a break. If it doesn't, I'll put up my copy in the code in the folder for a moment, and then I'll help you out.